Welcome to r slash best of Redditor updates, where OP's aunt wants to steal her unborn baby. Our next Reddit post comes from It's Everly Bear. I'm a 24-year-old woman, and I'm currently 8 months pregnant with a baby girl. My aunt and cousin have been giving me trouble ever since I announced the news. My partner and I already adore my unborn girl, and we have no plans to give her up. But my aunt wants me to give up my child to my cousin, who's been suffering from infertility for the past five years. For context, my aunt raised my sister and I as a motherly figure after our mother passed away when we were very young. We've been quite close with our aunt and cousin throughout our lives, and we've been trying to support my cousin through her struggles with infertility. My aunt is also very religious, being a Mormon who regularly attends church and has a very rigid, close-minded view on morality and values and living a good life. She believes that a child deserves a strong, foundational religious upbringing with a strong, providing father and loving, attentive mother. Since my partner is not Christian, and because we both have full-time jobs and careers, she believes that my child will grow up confused and misguided in our household due to our religious differences and from lacking a proper sense of identity and adequate care. She says she fears that our child's well-being will not be put first in such an environment and that our kid would likely go down a dark, immoral path. According to her, my cousin, who works part-time from home, and her husband are way better able to provide my child with a loving home and good values and religion. I have both my aunt and cousin blocked on most forms of communication, and I've moved to a new home where they don't know the address. My partner and I also got married in a private ceremony, so they won't have any control over my medical decisions. My aunt has been more aggressive towards me, and even showed up at my old apartment one day to scream and argue with me about the situation. She, in a nice, fake tone, tried to get me to come with her to a cafe near the church to speak with me about the baby, even after I told her there's nothing to be discussed and that I'm keeping the baby. I spoke with the apartment manager, and I had to hide until she left after an hour. My aunt also has her church friends going after me. They sometimes regularly send me hostile text messages and voicemails. My cousin has been on the quieter side towards me and has been struggling with depression and trauma from her latest pregnancy last year, which ended in the stillbirth of her baby girl after preterm labor at 30 weeks. She's been regularly posting on social media and has joined motherhood-related groups. I've heard through gossip that she's trying to get a baby through those groups, and she's been banned from a considerable amount of them, to her dismay. She's been harassing young moms and widows for their babies. My cousin is desperate for a baby to fix her family and is apparently waiting for me to give birth because she apparently sees my unborn baby as her late baby. She and my aunt are apparently certain that I'll be overwhelmed with the responsibilities of motherhood and that I should just give up my baby by letting my cousin adopt her. My aunt says that me giving my baby to my cousin shouldn't be that hard because we're family and I could always have another baby later on since I'm still young. Uh, down in the comments, people are asking OP why she doesn't just adopt and it turns out that the cousin wants the baby to look like her, as in be white and have white features. And also, the baby can't have any issues. Then, three days later, OP posted an update. We got in contact with the local church leader and talked to them about the situation with my aunt and cousin, who are both active members. We talked to him for a while. He initially dismissed my concerns as personal conflict between family and tried to refer us over to their counseling services. We explained to him that my cousin is dealing with trauma from her baby's death and that she's having false hopes about adopting my baby, which would be raised in a good home. We also told him that my aunt is feeding into those hopes and has been harassing me on her behalf, causing disturbance and a lot of stress. He told me that he understood my side and that he knew what my cousin has been going through with her inability to have kids. He said that he would contact my aunt and cousin to see what they have to say about the situation. Then, one week later, OP posted an update. We spoke again with the bishop. He said that there isn't much that he can personally do to resolve this situation outside of referring either of us to counseling services. I asked him if he met with my aunt, and he said that he did. Their conversation was apparently focused on my cousin and helping her heal. He told me that my cousin was also grieving the loss of communication with me and my sister, who hasn't been talking much to her anymore. I told him, of course we cut off communication. 
My cousin was trying to take my baby to replace hers, and her and her aunt's behavior was threatening the safety and well-being of me and my family. I think he was losing interest in the conversation, so he just told me to do whatever I feel is best for my family, but to consider the grief my cousin has been through and contact family counseling services for further help on this matter. Me and my partner sent him an email afterwards with a copy to our lawyer to close off communication. I decided to unblock my cousin and send her a message. I told her that my partner and I are keeping our baby and that is not up for discussion. I encouraged her to seek proper therapy if she hasn't done so already. She hasn't responded yet. Regardless of what she says, our relationship will not return to as it was before and she will not be a part of my child's life. Man, it's super ironic that the aunt and the cousin both think that they're the more moral family when they're constantly harassing pregnant women, new mothers, and widows trying to take their babies. Man, how cold is that, honestly? Imagine, just think about that. You're a woman, you give birth to a child, and your husband, the father of your child, dies. Then, random women message you and are like, hey, sorry about your husband dying, can we have your baby? One of the few remaining physical memories of your dead husband in life. We want to take him off your hands, just don't worry about it. Go start a new life over or something, whatever. It's just unbelievably disrespectful. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash am I the butthole. Am I the butthole for making a girl move classes after she called the cops on a door? What? So I'm a 19 year old guy in a nursing program. We do a lot of physical exams on each other to practice, which involves wearing shorts and a tank top. It's important to mention that I'm permanently blind in one eye. I'm constantly running into walls, doors, railings, plants, people, animals, everything. As you can guess, I'm covered in bruises 90% of the time, on my blind side. One day, during our course, we were talking about signs of abuse, and the teacher said constant bruising. I raised my hand and added that it's important to talk to the patient if they're an adult before calling the cops because it could be caused by something else. My teacher asked for an example, so I rolled up my sleeve and explained that all of my bruises were from door handles of the school, and all the bruises were of varying colors and heights. My teacher nodded and agreed. My teacher said that with children, we call the second that we suspect abuse. With adults, we attempt to talk to them first, and if the reason seems valid, we don't call. The lesson continued, but a week later, the cop showed up at my door. They told me they got a report that I was being physically abused because I was always covered in bruises. I told them about my disability, they checked my home, talked to my family, and saw no further signs of abuse. I asked where they got my address from, and they said from the university because they take abuse seriously here, and when they talked to the university about me, the university was very concerned and just wanted to help me. After the cops left, I talked to some people at the university, including a psychologist, just so they could be sure that I had no mental signs of abuse, then life went on. Well, I was still coming in every day with bruises, and one of my classmates came up to me and said that my other classmate, Kay, was telling people that she was thinking about calling the cops again because I'm still covered in bruises. I got this classmate to write down what she had heard, along with a few others, and I waited. Sure enough, the cop showed up again. It was the same song and dance, but this time, I told the university that Kay was using the cops to harass me and that I wanted something done about it. The university decided that the best course of action was to move Kay out of my labs to another one so that she couldn't see whether or not I was bruised. Kay now told me that I'm the butthole and that she was just trying to help me, and I didn't need to mess up her whole university schedule. So, Reddit, am I the butthole? OP, Honestly, you did this girl a favor, because if she's going to abuse official resources by being a moron, it's better to learn this now than later when she actually has a job at stake. Also, in the comments, OP says, Some of my classmates told me that they tried to talk her out of it because what abuse victim shows off their bruises to a classroom filled with nursing students and two registered nurses? Which is fair, but I didn't know if I went too far getting her removed from my labs. You know, actually, OP, I wouldn't even say that you removed her from the labs. You actually did the exact same thing that she did, which was report it to the authorities. It was the authorities who decided to remove her from your labs. Then, three weeks later, OP posted an update. So, anyways, I had previously gotten Kay removed from my labs. We still shared class, not labs, and I figured everything was fine now and that she'd leave me alone, but I was wrong. 
Not only was she spreading rumors that I was abused, but she called the cops again. Apparently, she did this more than once because the other two times the cops came, they said they had one report of abuse, but this time they said they had multiple reports of abuse. When I asked how many reports, they said that it was multiple people, so I don't know if other people in class called or if she had her family do so. I just don't know. They said they couldn't tell me who called due to privacy when it comes to reporting to try to make sure that abusers don't attack the reporters. Apparently, my university attempted to stop the police, but the cops had to check anyways. And again, we did the same song and dance. I told them that I felt like someone was using the cops to harass me. And the cops accepted this. They said that no one would show up again, and anyone who calls would now have their name taken down, and if they call after being told not to, they'd be charged with harassment. Well, that was about two weeks ago, and someone continued calling trying to call under a different name, and didn't realize they record phone numbers as well. So there's your update on Kay. She called again and again and again, until she got charged with harassment as well as misuse of police resources. I'm not certain what's going to happen going forward or if I'll be called to testify, but I haven't seen her since. I found all this out from another classmate. <laughs> Yo, Kay is like... I just know that you're being abused, and I'll prove it by abusing you. See? I knew I was right. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash relationships. I make really cool bases as a hobby. These can take weeks to complete and are always made with the gifty in mind. Me and my mom, who's 50, have always been into nature together. We hike, we own animals, and we eat outside if we can. So I made my mom a Siamese cat urn. It looks like a vase, but the top is the cat's ears. It's super cute, and I love the way that it turned out. No one died or anything. It was just the style of the piece. I finished it, took it to my apartment, wrapped it up, and I was so excited about it. Well, my boyfriend's mother came over, and my boyfriend didn't get her a Christmas slash birthday present. My boyfriend's mom loves cats, so he just gave her the piece that I made, which she loved. My boyfriend doesn't live with me. He has his own apartment near his school. His mother came over before we went to dinner to see my new kitten. She was in tears over how nice the present was, and I ruined it. I told her that the presents must have gotten mixed up because that was made for my mother. She got a bit upset and gave it back. Then my boyfriend went out to dinner with her. He said that it would be best if I didn't come. I guess she cried the whole way because he didn't have a present for her, so he looked like a bad son. I have trouble seeing where I'm at fault. I understand the nice thing would have been to remake a gift for her or just let her have it. However, this was one of my best pieces, and I always give my mother the art that I make. She loves it. She shows it off to everyone. It's something she takes great pride in. She has one from every Christmas, and I never miss a year. She even shows off the terrible ones that I made as a kid. My boyfriend wants to talk tomorrow. I'm not sure if he's going to break up with me or if he only wants to yell at me for it. I just need to know what people think. Was I a jerk? My boyfriend seems to think that I was. I love this guy very much, and I really love his mom. She's super sweet and kind, and never really gets nice things. I still don't think that it's my job to cover for his lack of foresight. Her birthday comes every year on the same day. It's not like it surprised him. I got her a card and a book, which I thought was nice. She thanked me for them later over text, but she seemed really sad about the cat vase. I guess she was hoping that either I made her something or my boyfriend actually got her something that she really liked. She loves cats, but he's never gotten her anything cat-themed. It was always cooking supplies or an apron, which means that he sucks at presents. Opie, it's funny you say that I guess he looked like a bad son because he is a bad son. He didn't look like a bad son. He is a bad son. And he's also a bad boyfriend on top of that. Then, three days later, Opie posted an update. My now ex-boyfriend showed up around 4 p.m. and wanted to talk at me. He just told me that he was disappointed and that it had taken a lot of sweet talking to make his mother understand what happened. He told her that I mixed up the packages, but that I did have a present for her and I just needed to go get it. I told him that I didn't have anything for her and that I was not going to be helping him out. I said that he could go buy one for her and try to pass it off as being handmade, but I was not covering for him. I told him that I felt his behavior was cruel to me, the effort that I put into my art, and my mom, his mom, just everyone. 
He told me that he expected better, that he would not apologize. He just kept getting angrier and angrier. He ended up grabbing a piece that I'd made earlier this year. I was really proud of it. It was a mermaid on a rock. He said that he would give this to her and that I could find a new boyfriend. I told him that if he left with that, I would call the cops. We weren't screaming, but we were both really angry. He slammed it back down on the table. He told me that he never wanted to see me again and I should call him when I grow the F up. I told him that we're over, that he was no longer my boyfriend and I wanted nothing to do with him. I said that he could take the clay back if he wanted, but I'd already returned the Xbox to the store, which I'd gotten for him as a Christmas present. According to the dribble coming out of his mouth, his mom was really hurt and had left town early. He thought that giving her a piece and shifting the blame to me for forgetting would make it better. I told him to just leave. So now I'm single, with a lot of clay and a lightly cracked mermaid statue. I'm not sure how I feel about this, but Dobby is free. My guess is that the reason why the mom is so sad in this story is because she just saw through his lie. She knows that he forgot the present, and she knows that he was trying to scam both his girlfriend and his mom, which makes the situation so much worse. In any event, congrats on your freedom, OP. That was our slash best of Redditor updates, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.